Hey guys, it's Jasmine, and that, oh, it's Puppy, and I have a feeling he's going to be staying there this entire video today because that's his new very comfy bougie blanket, and I actually set up a spotlight on him because who would I be if I didn't? And in today's video, we are going to talk about how to tell if your cats are playing or if they're actually fighting. As many of you saw this past Thursday, Thursday, I put out yet another video of Alfred and Puppy's morning routine, a very epic one, if I may say so myself. If you happen to miss it, I will link it in the description below. But there were actually a couple of questions that came with this video asking, how can you tell if your cats are being aggressive and wrestling in an aggressive, hurtful way, or if they're simply playing with each other in a harmless and happy way. So today I'm going to break down the different signs and body language signals and how to break up a cat fight if they do happen to be aggressively fighting, as well as how to prevent cat fights and a whole lot more. By the way, if you are new to this channel, welcome. We have videos on everything from kitty care tips to fun facts to feline nutrition and specifically raw cat food, as well as things for humans like workouts, stress management tips, recipes, and basically whatever I feel like posting. So if you'd like to join the Cat Lady Fitness family here on YouTube, all you have to do is click that subscribe button below as well as a little bell icon right next to it. And we do put out a new video every catter day, but for the month of December 2019, if you happen to be watching, we are shooting for a video a day. And if you're watching this on Facebook, then you can follow our page, Cat Lady Fitness. All right, so let's get right into it. If you aren't sure if your cats are playing or if they're actually aggressively fighting, then one of the best ways to identify which they're doing is to look at the absence of certain expressions or activity. If your cats are playing, then there's likely no hissing, no growling, no howling, especially those elongated howling sounds. You also won't see their teeth in an aggressive way as if Typically, when cats are hissing, they show their teeth. Your cat's nails will also likely be sheathed or retracted. They wouldn't be showing. As all of the things I just mentioned are signs that your cat is feeling threatened and trying to show the most aggressive and intimidating representation of itself. That said, if your cats are playing, then occasional hissing might happen, but generally, when all of these factors that we're talking about when it comes to cat fights come together, like the hissing, the growling, the nails, the teeth showing, those are a very obvious sign that it isn't just playtime. Along with that, you just have to pay attention to their body language because that's when it becomes really obvious. Are both of your cats puffing up with a rounded back and its hair standing on end? Are both of their tails as big and poofy as possible and sticking straight up? Are they standing big and tall in this stiff position with their hair sticking out, tail sticking out, teeth showing, growling or doing that rolling howling noise while staring down their counterpart? Do they also have their ears flattened backwards against their head. All of these things I just mentioned are huge body language cues that your cat is about to get in a fight. You might also see their tail whipping back and forth in that swatting motion. And like I mentioned, the stare down, although these two things can also be a part of cats playing. So now let's talk about the signs that your cats are simply aggressively playing as opposed to aggressively getting in a conflict. One of the signs that your cats are playing and not fighting is that they take turns in being predator and kind of a cat and mouse chase game. And there's an inherent fairness in a way of chasing back and forth and switching roles between who is the aggressor and who is the prey in this game. As you can see, Puppy and Alfred do often, they'll do these crazy flipping motions that are pretty impressive and they wrestle back and forth. They bat each other with their paws. They give those upside down bunny kicks, sometimes sideways bunny kicks. And something else you'll also see them do when they're playing is neck biting because inherently and instinctually 
cats will bite the neck of their prey. So this, I remember, especially in the beginning, I was like, "Mm, that looks a little bit risky. Like, I can't tell what's happening there. But after learning more and more and seeing how they play more and more, I realized that that's just a part of the game. They never puncture each other. they, They never draw blood or anything crazy. There will be times when puppy or Alfred will wiggle loose from the grasp of the neck biting and let out a little bit of a a howl, not a howl, but a little bit of a meow just as they're getting away. But honestly, it's just like if two brothers were fighting and one was like, mom, he's hitting me and goes the opposite direction only to turn around and like push his brother. Basically just a way to get out of that submissive position and then keep the game going. The thing is, you will probably see little short versions of stare downs and even ears going back for brief moments when your cats are playing. But the difference is you'll also see them kind of turn around and lick themselves and take little moments to turn away from the other cat while also staying in pretty close vicinity to each other. When cats are fighting, they keep a solid distance with all of those body language cues that I mentioned before, and they definitely won't stay super close to each other, taking their eye off of their opponent in order to lick their paw, for example. Basically, when your cats are playing, you'll witness a lot of reciprocity and taking turns and going back and forth, a lot of chasing, a lot of pausing, a lot of rolling around. And if you're still not sure if your cats are play wrestling, or if they're actually aggressively fighting, then you can just observe their post-playing behavior. Because you'll notice that your cats, if they were just playing, will simply shift back into their normal state. They might even nap by each other or lay down near each other. And you can tell that there's no residual tension. Now let's talk about the best ways to avoid your cats becoming aggressive towards each other in the first place and actually ever getting into a fight. The number one thing, if possible, is to make sure that you introduce a new cat into your home with your current cat properly and patiently. I did this with Puppy and Alfred. I have a video coming up sharing with you guys all of the exact steps that I took because as I've mentioned in a past video, they went from this to this. To this. And then most of the time back to this. In less than three weeks from when I first brought Alfred home. In addition to that, if you've already introduced your cats, maybe you didn't do it in the proper way to where they really don't like each other, they're really aggressive towards each other, then this step would be to actually reintroduce them. Oftentimes this works and it's necessary, especially if you didn't do it right the first time. The next thing you can do to avoid aggression or fighting between your cats in the house is to neuter your male cats and also to spay your female cats. Unsurprisingly, by neutering your male cats especially, it will remove some of those more aggressive tendencies along with their hormones that are being removed once their little bits are gone. It also helps to alleviate other things like male cats from spraying in the house oftentimes. Plus, not to mention, it helps against the cat population, which is already way overabundant from getting even worse. So definitely always spay and neuter your cats when you get them. Something else you can try doing is to use pheromone-based plugins or sprays like Feliway, which help your cats to feel more at ease and less stressed within the house because it works with different chemicals that mimic a mama cat's chemicals when a cat is nursing to help to calm your cats down. And it's proven really effective for a lot of people. And I will talk more about that in the Puppy and Alfred How I Introduce Them video as well. And another thing you can do if you find your cats are being aggressive or not getting along is to make sure that you have their food bowls and water bowls separated because oftentimes cats will get more aggressive when it comes to 
things like their food and even their spot on the couch, even certain toys that they use. So make sure that you have certain things separated, especially if you notice that the aggression stems around mealtimes or stems around using certain toys, or it can even be litter boxes. Now, let's say that it has happened, your cats are actually in a fight, or you can tell from their body signals that it's about to happen. What is the best way to break up a cat fight? First of all, you never want to physically get yourself involved or in the middle of it. You definitely don't want to put your body in there. You don't want to grab for a cat. You don't want to stick your hands in there because one thing is the aggression might turn towards you and you might find yourself full of attack marks if you try to do that. And the second thing is if you react in a violent or aggressive way back when that happens, then that just kind of snowballs it into your cat gaining even more aggression, maybe even being scared of you. And it's just, it's not the way to do it. So do not physically put yourself in the middle of a cat fight, even if it hasn't started yet, but you see those aggressive cues, but especially not if it's already going. What you want to do, even though it it is going to be a stressor for them, but that's also why it's going to break up the fight is to produce a loud noise somehow. Slamming a door, if you have a foghorn, first of all, you're awesome because who has a foghorn? But that would be perfect to break up a cat fight. It could be hitting pots and pans together. It could be a whistle if you happen to have one. Of course, you can also do some loud, aggressive clapping near where they are. And what this will do is it will startle them to where they at least disengage to where you can pick one up and take it to a next room to separate them and diffuse the situation, or it will be loud enough to where it actually scares them to run off in separate directions. Something else that people have said works is to throw a towel or a blanket over both of them if they're fighting already or over each of them if they're still in that pre-fight stance. That in itself will startle them enough to disengage them, and that way you can pick them up through the towel or blanket take them to a next room, shut the door, and separate them again for the situation to have time to diffuse. From here, depending on your situation, and I can go into more detail about this in a future video, but you either want to figure out a plan on how to reintroduce them, or you can kind of bring some awareness to some of the things spoken about today. See if their food bowls were way too close. See what you can identify or recognize as a potential trigger to whatever caused this conflict to happen. Now, there there are certain instances where cats simply do not get along, but I'm hopeful in believing that more likely than not, you can identify what's causing this conflict and then take the steps in order to alleviate whatever those triggers are. As you can see... Puppy leads a very, very stressful, tough life, obviously, while Alfred is out sitting on the catio watching his squirrel garden. And if these two grown boys can get along as well as they did, as quickly as they did, then I'm confident that you can experience the same exact thing with your feline fur babies in your house. All right, guys, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. If you did, please click that thumbs up below because that helps me know the content that you like to see and cannot forget the meow out of the week this week which goes to four people and those four people are curly q 55 pamela bean riley farley and denise bowens thank you guys so much for leaving your comment about what your favorite part of last Catterday's video was, which was the video about fun facts about cat whiskers. I appreciate each of you so, so much. I always read all of the comments and want to say thank you from me and of course, Puppy and Alfred. And for anybody else, if you would like to be the meow out of the week in next week's video, all you have to do is click the thumbs up to like this video and then leave a comment below telling me your favorite part about it. Remember to subscribe if you want to be a part of the Cat Lady Fitness family because I would love to have you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.